Now, all these examples have been taken from um, the Titan equipment with the patients attending our clinic. However, the patterns are also consistent with those being reported elsewhere in the literature. Now, to begin with, I need to stress that these are only general patterns associated with the medley dis disorders. The patterns do change with the progression of the disease, and also there's a significant overlap between normal and media, normal pattern and medley pathologies. So it's important to note that wideband absorbance measures, they are not standalone measures. They should be interpreted along with other audiological measures to improve the identification of midlayer pathologies or even differentiate between um, possible midlayer pathologies. Let's take the most common one, which is otitis media with effusion. The wideband absorbance traces from the right and the left ears are given in this slide. Now, the VRA showed a moderate sloping to a mild conductive loss in the better ear, and in otitis media with effusion, one of the common patterns is that the wideband absorbance is reduced in the low to mid frequencies and a sharp peak seen between 3 and 4 kilohertz. Now, ambient and pressurized conditions are affected in similar way with otitis media with effusion. Animal and human studies have shown that absorbance generally decreases as the, uh, middle the fluid fills the middle cavity and more significantly after about 50% of the cavity is filled with fluid. This effect is seen mostly below the 3 kHz region. The absorbance in high frequencies change less as fluid replaces air. Another common pattern seen in ears with otitis media with effusion is that absorbance is reduced uniformly across the whole frequency range without any obvious peaks in any frequency region. Again, uh, both the ambient and pressurized condition are affected similarly. We, as the, um, the fluid fills the middle cavity, the sharp peak in the high frequency is abolished, and then, but absorption generally reaches a low value at all frequencies. These two uh, wideband absorbent traces are taken from a, um, years of a six-year-old child with bilateral otitis media with effusion. Each year demonstrates a different pattern. The absorbance is reduced equally across the entire frequency range in the left ear, while the absorbance is reduced with a peak in the high frequencies in the right ear. The difference in the absorbance pattern can be attributed to the differences in content, amount, and the viscosity of effusion. For the people who um, evaluate infants and children, we see the middle effusion is very common. And um, we compare the patterns of effusion between infants and children. And when I say children with the mean age of about six years, the most common pattern with the neonates and young infants was uniformly reduced absorbance across a whole frequency region, whereas in children, the most common pattern was the uh, reduced absorption in low to mid frequencies with a peak around 3 to 4 kilohertz. Let's look at the next condition, which is a patent grommet. Wideband absorbance can be useful in the determination of the middle ear status when in the presence of grommets. The typical pattern found with grommet in situ and um, is increased absorbent in the mid to high frequencies, especially between 0 0.5 to 1 kilohertz with a patent grommet. Another condition that commonly uh, seen in the clinics is tympanic membrane perforation. In ears with tympanic membrane perforation, absorbance can be either normal or increased, mainly in frequencies below 2000 hertz. Location of tympanic membrane perforation does not greatly affect absorbance. However, absorbance varies with the size of the perforation, with the small perforation having the largest effect. Absorbance is shown to increase with tympanic membrane perforation at frequencies below 1000 Hz. It can be pronounced around 1000 Hz for very small perforation, and as the size of the perforation increases, the absorbance peak shifts to higher frequencies. This slide shows a range of wideband absorbance pattern seen in ears with dry perforation. As said earlier, location of perforation does not affect the absorbance much. While there's no generic pattern with various perforation, 
slightly pronounced absorbance in the low to mid frequencies can be seen as the size varies from pinhole to a total perforation. Most of the studies have been reported on, on dry perforation. Um, our limited experience has shown that unlike dry perforation, there's no absorbance pattern that can be specific to the wet perforation. The next one would be a healed perforation, a compliant tympanic membrane such as an ear with a, a healed perforation demonstrates increased absorbance around the 1000 Hz region. However, the absorbance across the mid to the high frequencies will be quite no within the normal limits. Nevertheless, you have to be careful in um, determining this because even uh, ossicular chain dysfunction can really give rise to an increased um, absorbance pattern around this frequency region. Hence, it's important to couple the wideband absorbance measures with tympanometry to differentiate between an abnormal tympanic membrane and ossicular chain dysfunction. Now, one of the common statements made by audiologists is that C-type tympanograms denote negative middle ear pressure and possibly eustachian tube dysfunction. However, C-type tympanograms do not always imply eustachian tube dysfunction. C-type can be seen with or without middle ear effusion. And wideband absorbance can be especially useful in determining ears with and without middle ear effusion. Let's see how it can be used to uh, determine the presence or absence of effusion. Now, in this slide, the patient had C-type tympanogram, and as it can be seen, the middle ear pressure was minus 377 decapascal. Hearing was reasonably within normal range with some conductive component present in the low frequencies. But when you look at the comparison of the wideband absorbance and the wideband tympanometric curve, um, you can see there's a large difference between the two conditions. During ambient pressure, which is the line in gray, the absorbance is reduced in frequencies below 2000 Hz and is within normal limits above 2000 Hz. However, under pressure conditions, at peak middle ear pressure, the absorbance improves drastically to the normal limits at uh, in the low to mid frequencies. So usually in the absence of effusion, if it's a negative middle ear condition, the wideband tympanometric um, curve improves significantly compared to that of the ambient pressure condition. In the next slide, now we look into a, um, from an ear with a confirmed otitis media in the right ear. Tympanometry again showed um, C-type tympanogram here with minus 364 decapascal. Audiogram showed a mild to moderate conductive hearing loss. And on the graph on the left side, you can see the plotting of both the wideband absorbance at ambient pressure and at peak tympanometric pressure. The absorbance is low across the whole frequency range under the ambient pressure condition. And during pressure condition, Although it improves slightly in the, uh, the high frequencies range, the absorbance doesn't show much difference in the low to mid frequency range. The absorbance under pressure's condition didn't change significantly with the years with effusion. Now, there's another related phenomenon here with C-type tympanogram uh, with and without effusion is also the autoacoustic emission. All the notes shown in the presentation Titan can perform both TE, uh, the transient and distortion autoacoustic emission at two different pressures, ambient and peak tympanometric pressure. Often it can be seen that there's no difference in emission between the two pressure conditions in ears with effusion. On the other hand, when there's no effusion, autoacoustic emissions improve and are much stronger under peak tympanometric pressure than under ambient pressure conditions. So your, both your tympanogram as well as the autoacoustic emission show us improvement when you measure at peak tympanometric pressure than at the um, ambient pressure condition.